executed one of the most infamous Capitol riot defendants, but tonight he's a defendant himself. State troopers say former federal prosecutor Patrick Scruggs stabbed someone on the Howard Franklin Bridge. What a scene here. Scruggs worked as a prosecutor in Florida's middle district for more than 10 years. Fox 13's Evan Axelman reports tonight on the chaos that led to that violent incident. It all started with a driver passed out in the middle of the highway on the Howard Franklin Bridge and ended with a former federal prosecutor allegedly stabbing the man. Hello, world champions. I'm John Ward, and this is Breaking News with John Ward Breaking News. Breaking news. You might not have heard this story, and there's a good reason. Quote, a former U.S. Department of Justice prosecutor whose tenure included January 6th cases has been accused of stabbing a Florida man in a road rage fight on a bridge outside Tampa, Florida. Florida Highway Patrol troopers arrested Patrick Douglas Scruggs, a 38-year-old attorney, on the Howard Franklin Bridge after he allegedly hacked up a 35-year-old man with a pocket knife, according to authorities. The incident began when the victim slumped over in his driver's seat and stopped traffic during the morning rush hour Tuesday. And here's the real and much shorter version. A person has a medical emergency of some kind on a Florida highway, causing them to slump over and crash into two vehicles. The person in the first vehicle, who noticed the slumping, immediately gets out to help. Then from the second vehicle comes Scruggs, federal prosecutor of January 6thers, who storms over, shoves the helpers out of the way, smashes the window, and starts repeatedly stabbing the guy who is in the middle of having a medical emergency. When the person from the first vehicle tries to intervene in this new madness, Scruggs threatens to stab him and another witness, then moves to flee the scene just when a deputy happens by and puts an end to the nonsense. Sound unbelievable? Well, in a rare case of actual journalism, there's evidence. Or more like the common case of the pursuit of justice by a gentleman that the journalist finally caved to, the quote-unquote good Samaritan who tried to help the victim, who might be both literally good and literally Samaritan in the way meme magic likes to appear in the best stories, evidence, and a follow-up interview this guy took the time to do where he describes the event in detail. Samaritan who witnessed this bizarre bridge attack is speaking out tonight. He tried to save a man who was passed out on the Howard Franklin Bridge Tuesday morning. He says he would do it all again even after a former federal prosecutor got out of his car and attacked the man before turning a knife on him. Good Samaritan Ahmed Jahaf showed us this video of former federal prosecutor Patrick Scruggs about to be placed in handcuffs. Troopers say he stabbed a man that he'd just crashed into. I didn't have any reason to do that. To no. stop him. No reason to do that. It all started around 9.20 Tuesday morning when Jahaf saw a car stopped on the Howard Franklin Bridge. He stopped in front of it and got out to help. And I see him asleep in the car. You know, I think he have health problem. I don't know what he have. After banging on the window, Ahmed went back to his car to get something to break it. FHP says the passed out driver suddenly woke up and drove forward into Ahmed's car. As he tried to maneuver again, he crashed into a third car, driven by Patrick Scruggs. I am feeling the effects of masculinity right now. I feel the testosterone. I want to go to war! I want a lightsaber! I'm a man! A former assistant U.S. attorney. This picture shows the three cars jammed together. FHP says Scruggs War! then got out Get this off of me! and used a pocket knife the lightsaber! to break War! the formerly passed out driver's window. I'm a man! Then FHP says he repeatedly stabbed that driver. War! Ahmed tried to intervene again. He came into me very close with the knife. He think I'm with him. I don't know. He said, War! you know, like, War! The, like, War! This is a knife from my chest. The lightsaber! I run. I'm a man! A passing St. Pete deputy was able to place Scruggs under arrest. The stabbing victim was left with serious injuries but is expected to survive. And Ahmed says he would not hesitate to again try to save someone in need of help, even though he had no idea how violent this was about to get. Yeah, when you see something, stop. Today is, is somebody else, tomorrow is going to be you son, your daughter, your wife, your neighbor, your cousin, stop. So why has this story finally broken into the mainstream? The Samaritan and his video evidence, yes, but also thanks to the diligent documentation and work of Lectern Guy, the January 6th are now immortalized by his infamous photo with Nancy Pelosi's Lectern. Lectern Guy, 
whose official crime was one count of entering or remaining in a restricted building, an unofficial crime was smiling and waving, he never actually stole the lectern, though the mainstream continues to report otherwise, was prosecuted by none other than federal prosecutor Patrick Scruggs to the tune of 75 days in jail. Lectern Guy, quote, I hope the victim of this stabbing is recovering well and will not have any long-term health issues as a result of the violent assault. My time with Mr. Scruggs was short, but his message was clear. Everyone needs to be held accountable for their actions. While I was never afforded the luxury of innocence until proven guilty, I refuse to deny him that right. Everyone has the right to defense and counsel, and he will have his opportunity to explain why he was seen holding a weapon over the victim who was covered in blood. What I will speak on are the double standards of the bail conditions. Mr. Scruggs has been accused of aggravated battery, aggravated assault, and armed burglary, all of which are felonies. Mr. Scruggs posted bail within 24 hours of his arrest and was given no additional conditions for his release, even though he is clearly a threat to his community. After I spent four days in isolation at Pineas County Jail, Mr. Scruggs appeared as the prosecutor in my case in Tampa. He demanded my passport be taken, my firearms turned over, random drug testing be administered, an ankle monitor be worn, my travel restricted to the Middle District of Florida, and a nightly curfew. The crimes I was accused of were non-violent and non-drug related. It is blatantly clear to see that justice is no longer a double-edged sword, but a blunt instrument used by an authoritative regime. Former federal prosecutor Patrick Scruggs does face charges for the stabbing. His pretrial is scheduled for May 3, 2024. He awaits his court date from the comfort of his home where he is out on bail after stabbing a guy on a highway. The lightsaber! That's it for today. I'm John Ward, and until next time, remember, you're a world champion. Don't let your memes be dreams. Pictures taken by Tara Iglinski show Patrick Scruggs standing outside of a car in a three-car pileup. Someone else's bloody hands are sticking out of a window. He had a lot of blood on his arms and cuts on his arms, and I was trying to figure out what had caused that. Troopers say Scruggs had bashed through that window and stabbed the man multiple times. Just before that, the man had been passed out while behind the wheel. His car stopped on the Howard Franklin Bridge. Two good Samaritans had also stopped and evidently startled him awake. He drove forward, hit the good Samaritan's car, and then drove into Scruggs' path. Troopers say that's when Scruggs stopped and took out his pocket knife. It's just so sad that someone would react in that way. There's so much road rage nowadays. Witnesses might not have expected it from Scruggs had they known he was a federal prosecutor for 10 years. He just left that job for a private practice. But while he served the U.S. Attorney's Office in Tampa, he helped on high-profile cases, including that of Adam Johnson, who stole the lectern from Nancy Pelosi's office during the Capitol insurrection. His actions speaks to his actions and his actions only. Uh, we don't ever want to see someone get out and you know commit some kind of violence like this, whether it be at a home, a restaurant, or on the highway. Troopers also say Scruggs used the knife to scare the Good Samaritans off when they tried to help the stabbing victim. Traffic was stopped for three hours, after which the former federal prosecutor was charged with aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. It doesn't matter who he is, what he did was really, really scary, and the way he reacted there was really frightening. Scruggs bonded out of jail after about 10 hours in custody. We do not yet know why that driver was stopped in the middle of the highway and passed out. Evan Axelbank, Fox 13 News.